Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be evaluating the sine of an imaginary number, in other words, sine of i, which is also known as the square root of negative one. Now, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. So to be able to find sine i, we're gonna be, obviously the answer will be expressed in different versions, methods, ways, and we're gonna talk about a different type of function first, which is the hyperbolic functions. So let's go ahead and talk about two types of functions that are hyperbolic. First one is hyperbolic sine, which is known as SINH. And if, if you have the hyperbolic sine of X, then we can write this as E to the power X minus E to the power negative X divided by two. And the hyperbolic cosine is given as e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. As you can see, they just differ by the sign. Now, what happens if you add these two things? Let's go ahead and find out. If you add sine hyperbolic, I should probably start with that. Sine hyperbolic or hyperbolic sine and then hyperbolic cosine. You basically get rid of the e to the power negative x and you end up with e to the power x. Now, does that look familiar? I hope it does because we're about to write the complex or imaginary version of this equation. But before that, let's go ahead and talk about or explore whether the Pythagorean theorem holds for hyperbolic functions. Do you think it does? Like, in other words, what is sine hyperbolic squared and cosine hyperbolic squared x? When you add them, do you get one? Is that one? That's a good question, right? Let's find out. We can replace hyperbolic sine with e to the power x plus, I think it was the negative one, not minus one. Okay, we're gonna start with that. e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by two. We're gonna square that. e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. We're gonna square that. When you square this and add them up, you're gonna get something like this. e to the two x, e to the negative two x plus two, plus e to the two x plus e to the negative two x minus two, all over four. Now, the twos are gonna cancel out. We're gonna have two of these and two of those. So it's gonna look like this, e to the two x plus e to the negative two x, divided by four, two goes into four twice. So this is gonna give you kind of like the, the hyperbolic cosine, but instead of x, we have two x. So hyperbolic cosine of two x would be the answer. So in other words, the Pythagorean theorem does not hold, but actually the double angle formula holds if you add up the squares. Unlike the Pythagorean theorem that holds for trigonometric functions. So there are slight differences. Okay, can we get the Pythagorean theorem though? In other words, one, yes. If you go ahead and look at the difference of the, the squares, then you should be getting one and you can easily, easily verify that, okay? Now, this is not the whole purpose, but I just wanted to show you because when I look at, when you look at some of the answers, I want it to make sense. And we're gonna talk about that as well. So let's get back to uh, what we are supposed to use. So we have e to the power x, you know, can be written as cosine hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic, there's some. What about e to the power ix? Well, you can definitely replace x with ix, but what does that mean? Well, Euler gave us this formula and this is really awesome e to the i x can be written as cosine x plus i sine x. And we do need sine i. That's nice. This is exactly what we need. So we're gonna go ahead and replace x with i. But that's only gonna give us e to, uh, sine i. And I mean, it's gonna give sine i and cosine i together. So how do you get rid of those? Easy, I'll tell you. If you replace x with negative x, you get e to the power of negative i x. Is cosine of negative x is cosine x because cosine is even, and sine of negative x is negative sine of x, so we get, we get the following. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at these two equations and subtract them and divide by two, you end up finding an identity for sine of x. And x, by the way, doesn't have to be real. It can be pretty much anything. You can write it in a different form if you multiply by i or negative i, it doesn't really matter, no big deal, because our goal is to express it I mean, to find sine of i, right? So let's go ahead and replace x with i. That's gonna give us a sine of i. I'm gonna use parentheses so it doesn't look like s i and i. 
which kind of explains the title, right? Have you looked at it? Anyways, so this is going to give us, if you replace x with i, it's going to give you e to the i squared minus e to the negative i squared divided by 2i. And we can kind of simplify this a little bit. i squared is negative 1. Don't forget that. So this will be e to the power negative 1 minus e to the power positive 1 divided by 2i. Of course, you don't want i in the denominator. That looks really ugly. So we're going to multiply by negative i. And if you do that, negative i over negative i, of course, you're going to replace or distribute. And when you distribute a negative sign, it's just going to switch. So we're going to get something like this. E minus E to the power of negative 1. And then that will be divided by 2. By the way, negative I squared is 1 because I squared is negative 1. That's why I is defined as the square root, the principal square root of negative 1. There are two of them, but we consider this one the principal square root. Make sense? So there's definitely, and of course, this should be multiplied by i. That comes from here, okay? Because these two simplified. Now, you can write this in a you know, couple different ways. For example, e to the power of negative 1 is 1 over e. So you can kind of write it that way. And then simplify this a little bit. That would give you e squared minus 1 over 2e. And of course, don't forget to multiply by i. So that should give you the answer, right? Yes, but there's another way to express this. If you focus on this piece or this piece or even this piece, let's go ahead and take a look. Why? Because if you remember, sine hyperbolic or hyperbolic sine of x was defined as this. And in this case, if you replace x with 1, then you get hyperbolic sine of 1, which is e minus e to the power of negative 1 divided by 2, which is exactly what we have. Does that make sense? That's why I wanted to talk about the hyperbolic functions. And guess what? As a bonus, I'm going to give you a couple different ways to express it. But before that, let me tell you. Since sine of i is a multiple of i, in other words, an imaginary number, so let's write this one more time. Sine of i can be written as e squared minus 1 over 2e multiplied by i. Sine of i divided by i is actually a real number. Isn't that interesting? I think so. And there's definitely a name for it. That's what we're going to talk about. And that is given in the Bible from Alpha, so I'm not going to repeat it. But before that, let me go ahead and show you some of the interesting ways to express it, which was, were given by Wolf from Alpha, by the way. But where do they come from? That's for you to find out, okay? If you know the proof, let us know in the comment section down below. But sine of i can be written in so many different ways, one of which is i times k equals 0 to infinity, the sum of 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial. The odd factorials, reciprocals, they're being added infinitely many times. Or you can write the sine of i as, without the i on the outside, you can write it with sigma, k equals 0 to infinity. But this time we're going to write this as 1 minus i pi over 2 to the power 2k divided by 2k factorial. This time, we're using the even factorials, and how nice is that? There's actually one more way to write it, using integrals, which is really cool, and you probably know where this comes from. 0 to 1, a definite integral of cosine hyperbolic. By the way, if you differentiate si hyperbolic sine, you get the hyperbolic cosine, and vice versa, which is pretty interesting, and that doesn't happen in normal trigonometry. Let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. ta da 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 here we go. So the decimal approximation is going to be about 1.1752 something something i, or this expression, which we wrote as e squared minus 1 over 2e, is also known as the hyperbolic sine of 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.